Hello and welcome to Talk to Malik Jones. My guest tonight is the Secretary General of the Gambian National Trade Union Congress, Ibrahim Gaba Cham. Ibrahim Cham, welcome, welcome to Talk to Malik Jones. Yeah, thank you very much, Elijah Malik, for this important program. And um, good evening to all listeners and viewers of this program. I am here today with uh, Elijah Malik Jones. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Um, Gaba, we are going to begin this program, first of all. I know as uh, uh, Secretary General, General of, of the, the Gambian, Gambian National, National Trade, Trade Union Congress, Congress, you have a, a big, big job. job. Because the workers of this country should be under the umbrella of the Gambian National Trade Union Congress. And as I understand, there are a good number of um, trade union uh, affiliated to the Congress right now. But let's go to the origins. What can you tell us about the origins of trade unionism in the Gambia? I know uh, from having read history that Edward Francis Small was very key in establishing the, the labor movement, movement in the Gambia. Gambia. What, what can, can you tell us? Yeah, that's the fact. Because according to records, books, and research that have done up to the archive of the Gambia, Edward Small is the founder of trade unionism in the Gambia in 1929. And finally, he was given the title as the father and founder of trade unionism in West Africa, journalism and politics in West Africa. So Small, evidently, he is the father and founder. He inspired some people, not only Gambians, into trade unionism, but, but who, 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 who can you no, tell us, pinpoint? In the Gambia or within Outside the Gambia, not only in the Gambia, but outside the Gambia as well. Yeah. People like Bless Jang of Senegal, Senegal. Mm -hmm. because when he came from World War One and learned that I mean, trade, there is trade, the trade union movement in the Gambia, and uh, founded by E.F. Small, uh, he visited the Gambia, you know, to know about uh, the organization, how it is prepared, how it is done, and for its purpose. And uh, through that. Uh, he was able to invite Small to Senegal in order to have the same thing established in Senegal. <coughs> trade union. Mm -hmm. I was told by an elderly person that when uh, Blaise Jain came to the Gambia, I mean, he waited Small at the S.L. Johnson, where the checkpoint is <coughs> under the tree. Mm -hmm. And then Small crossed by fishing boat to meet him at that place so that they can go to Senegal, you know, in order to establish as well trade unionism. And at the same time, with his influence, his influence in World War also, he facilitated the travel of small to Britain to the House of Lords and House of Commons. That also he did, Bless Jain. So the man, the owner of the canoe, the fishing vessel or the canoe, fishing canoe, that uh, cross small to Sahara. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, his name was Baku Seka. Baku Seka. Baku Seka, and he was living in Prime Street, according to elders, through my research with elders who definitely who we are very very close to Edward Small, and we are part of person of the struggle who supported Small to make sure that trade unionism established in the Gambia. That was the origins of the trade union in the country. Yes. We move away from the Edward Francis Small period. I know he did a lot, in fact, inspired a lot of people, in not only in trade unionism, but as you said, he was a journalist, he was also a politician. Uh, it led to the agitation of the Gambia becoming an independent country, sort of give inspiration anyway. Um, it makes me remember uh, people that you must have worked very closely or people who must have inspired you. There was a man I remember by the name of Araba and of course Emi Jalo. Can we recall? Yes, uh, in fact, before working with Emi Jalo, 
Before working with Arawa, I first started with Emi Jalo. By that time, the Gambia Workers Union was deregistered by the PPP government in 1977. So during the time of the Gambia and Senegal Confederation, there was the Confederation of Senegalese Trade Unions and Gambian Trade Unions. So it's what MA used as a platform to operate trade unionism again in the Gambia. So it's when he joined the Senegalese and they established the Gambia, uh, Gambia, Senegambia Workers Confederation. So when the, okay, the Confederation, you know, broke away, mm -hmm. so then Emi maintained the Gambia Workers Confederation. By that time he was joined by people like Jantu and others. Pamudu Fal. Pamudu Fal. So they were at the, uh, see, at, a, at an office in the, uh, at Lehman Street. If I could remember, I don't know where the 51 Lehman Street. Just opposite, you know, that clinic. In yes, at the junction of Orange Street. Yes, because workers are voiceless and their voice need to be heard and the parliament is, is the only place where workers voice could be heard because it is the place where decisions are made, policies are made, you know, and anything which governs this nation. So he deemed it necessary to contest the election in order to have a seat, you know, to raise the voice of workers, you know, in the, in the national assembly. As a young man following the footsteps of uh, Emi Jallo, may his soul rest in peace, he was a friend of mine. Um, in fact, his son was a friend of mine, and that's somebody I uh, moved with Lai Jallo. I moved with him too. We used to have yeah. lunch at the play at, at Lancaster Street, and yes, uh, Emi was very accommodating. Now, as an apprentice, or as a scholar to Emi Jallo. What did you learn from him? Yeah, Emi, I learned from him that uh, one thing is that he believed in justice, social justice. I learned from him again that uh, he agitated for the independence of this Gambia in 1961, which is a history known by everyone. And whenever they are talking about the history of independence of this country, hardly they mention his name. Hardly. They only say unions. Mm. Instead of mentioning the name of the person. And that was Emi Jalo who agitated for the independence of this country in 1961 and was arrested. He, he, you know, he subdued himself to the colonial. It's not necessary he was physically in fact even arrested. They went to their compound and did not found him there when at the time, according to Uncle Kevandu, because he was the one who was driving the desk at that time with Pambu Tenjai, you know, they took Emi out of the crowd at Wilberforce because it was very tough at the time. Out of the crowd, they go and park the desk at Primary Street you know, and then took the port out and then go to the beach side behind Atlantic Hotel. It's where they go and start, you know, to refresh their mind. Re-strategize. You know, re-strategize, mm. you know, and many other things. Until around, you know, long time, you know, they decided to go home. When he went home, the mother told him that the, 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 the police came here for you. He said, they came here for me. He said, yes. So you are needed at the Atlantic Hotel. They said for a meeting. He said, "Okay, I'm going." So many things that he said with the mom, and he told the mom, "Don't, don't, don't, don't even mind. I either go to jail or I die." But Gambia will <coughs> have independence. So when he went to the to 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 to, to Atlantic Hotel, the old Atlantic Hotel, you know, thinking that it was a meeting, but he knows that. They need to arrest. They want their interest was to arrest. To arrest him. Yes. So that's the time he was arrested. You see. But another thing I learned was that Emmy was having national backing, and that is what is what unionism is all about. 
The backing of the people. The backing of the people. Because the union is there for the people. The people are the workers. They are the actors of development. There is nothing on earth a part of God which is not done by the grace of God and the people. Anything you see on earth here is the people a part of God. We will move away from Emmy yes. and pay our respects to him. But he had a scholar. He had somebody who was very close to him, Arababa. What can you tell us about Arababa? Oh, Arababa, I work with Arababa longer than I work with Emmy. Emmy, we just have a short period of time. But before he died, he advised me, he gave me a document and then advised me to go and follow Araba. He said, I have high regard for Araba, I respect Araba, and I trust Araba. And is that trust, respect, I also found with Araba. And we have worked for many, many years. How would you, how would you describe Araba? Araba is a very intelligent man. He's flexible, he's diplomatic, he's sincere, and he's honest. And he served the workers to the best of his ability. And he was also a tough guy. He encountered lots of challenges, frustrating challenges, but because of his toughness, he was mm. able to cross all those challenges. Now, can you tell us what were these challenges? Some of them, not all. Okay, one thing, when the Gambia Workers, uh, Workers Union was deregistered in 1997. Does that mean, was it, when you said deregistered, it, it wasn't a, a legal entity anymore? It was, exactly. Okay, they, what happened. it was like they're they banning it. Yes. All right. In fact, I think that, that at that time, mm. even Lawyer like, Hussein Odawo could, uh, could remember because he was the Registrar General at the time. Yeah, okay. he was the Registrar General at the time. All right, all in right. In 1977. All right, he put his pen on the paper and deregistered yeah, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, advice yeah. of the, the powers that be. Yeah, he was the Registrar General at the time. Okay. But he goes by edition. I know, I know, I know. The, know. the powers that be will tell him, yeah, do go this, ahead, do, do this, this and he does that. Mm. Yeah, this was... Was it the PPP government? Yeah, or? it was the PPP very government. Very well, very well. They called very, on, uh, very they well. summoned a midnight, you know, cabinet meeting, come out with the society's act, and based on that, he was arrested and the union was deregistered. Okay. So this was how it happened. And then it was not a legal entity anymore. So they have to do government to court. And all their courts, they won it up to the highest court. They won all the courts. The, the workers' union? Yes. So during that process, Araba was approached by many institutions to work with him, but he said, no, my mission, my vision, my cause is the emancipation of the working masses of the Gambia and internationally at large. Through that, he was sent out of home. So you see, he started to sleep in a mosque opposite their company. Hmm. that everyone can bear me witness. Finally, a very good woman called Auntie Marie, Auntie Marie Bajan, you know, Mr. Ngom's wife at Kent Street, they are 35, you know, the mother of the late Mam Yusu, hmm. you know, Awangom and others, Mam Sei, you know, etc. So give, give Araba a room and follow where Mam Yusu was living, you know, to Live there. That was the banjo of yesterday. Yeah, kind was, people yeah, accommodating, accommodating, ready to give you um, some solace when you're really down and out. Exactly. So, and it's where Arab stayed throughout his life. Um, even when he died, everything was done in that coma. He died when he was living there too. All right. So, you know, that was a big challenge. He was. You see, another thing is that, I mean, you know, he faced lots of problems. CID is monitoring him every night, morning. All his activities was monitored. He 
he used to explain it to me. Did the government at the time see the trade union as a threat that will eventually grow and uh, become a political entity that can bring them down? In fact, uh, that was their thinking according to what Edwards informed me when they instituted the 1977 strike. You see, when it was when the union was deregistered, I can say 80% of the workers of PWD were all dismissed from their work. At the time when Khalil Singhate was the minister. I know maybe you can. I know Kalelo Singhate. You can also remember that. I know Kalelo Singhate. Most of the workers lose their jobs. 1977. You know, so they said because the union want to take power, so they deregister it by a condition that they should submit statement of account. Forgetting that all of them, or most of them, that led to the registration of the union, we are all part of the union and we have been supported by the union and the union have given most of them scholarships to go and learn they betrayed the cause of the workers you touch on a point here the government of the day wanted um, proof or an auditing sort of auditing you must present your books of accounts yes, that's right. where was the source of income for the movement, for the labor movement, for the Congress. Yeah, that was resource from the membership. Okay. You understand? Any external external subvention? Yeah, there or was government yes. did government of the time give you subvention? Never. Okay. Government have never given subvention to the union. But they feared you. Yeah, they feared at that time. Mm. Because the union was very powerful. Definitely. You know, even elders told me that even after independence, they may could have took over political power at the time. That's why when we when he contested for parliamentary elections he failed. They fought him. Yeah, they fought him bitterly to lose. So you see, but any anyway, if not them, it might be the future. You have learned from Emi Jallo and from Araba. Yes. Today your Secretary General of the Gambia National Trade Union Congress what have you been able to achieve since? When were you Secretary General? Let's get that first. I became the Secretary General in 1990, almost around 2000. And you took off from who? I took off, I took off from, uh, from one year and year. Yeah, and year. Yes. Okay. But as for Gambia Workers Union, because mm. by, that is the Trade Union Congress. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Gambia Workers Union, where uh, where I was groomed, yeah, you know, I became the Secretary General when Ahmadou Arababa died, and that was in two thousand and one. Mm. You know, because most of the elders, or oh, his I mean, companions, were very very old, and I was the only youngest. You know at the time and I was the one in the field all along you see because they were very old and I was the one at that time very young and energetic to do the you know field work and etc so the elders decided to hand, hand you over the button and hand over me the button to be the Secretary General with their help and with their backing as well. Up to date, I consult with some of them that are in life. That are in life. Yes, definitely. I never leave them. I always consult with them. Yes. So, since then, you know, I start to go ahead with the... How many, movement. how many, how many unions or how many thrift societies make up the National Trade Union Congress? At the beginning it was almost to, let's say, around seven unions. One, it was Gambia Workers Union, Horticulture Workers Union, Transport Workers, Gambia National Transport Workers Union, Al-Khaji, Keba, Biramira, and Jai, 
George Njai's father, Panja, he died in school, his father. And, uh, and we get another one that was... Uh, the Sellers, Sellers Gambia, Union? Gambia Labor Union. Labor Union, you okay. Know, headed by Uncle MMCC, Port Dudu CC. You know, yes. And the father of Keba CC, Keba Masani. <laughs> okay, and the dog workers, you know, at the time. You see. And uh, which other union again? You get the hotel, restaurant, catering workers union. You know, that is here. What about the What about the sailors? I thought the sailors are the union. What are the yeah, the, the dock workers? Yes, and the, the dock workers and the Gambia mm. Seaman Union. The Seaman Union, so yeah, this, Seaman Union. These we are the and the Gambia Transport Workers Union. Is headed by Al Haji. That is all. You see. Mm. At the time when he established the late, the late Daddy Sow. At the time when he established another union called the Gambia Transport Food and Agriculture. You know, which was established by Daddy, myself and others and other people as well. Mm. So these we are the pioneers of the Gambia National Trade Union and Congress. Was yes. lack of education of your membership a stumbling block? to what you wanted to achieve because if everybody was learned everybody know their right and uh, want to make sure that they understand what trade unionism was all about you would have succeeded to the very very top by, of course, by the compared time. to countries like Senegal uh, Sierra Leone Ghana Nigeria these the trade unions are very powerful Yes, you know. Or they can bring a government down even if they if want the to. If the Gambia Workers Union mm. was not deregistered, then we could have passed the stage. Because it was the strongest union at the time in Africa. Africa. This is mm. a reality. So, and we, it was deregistered for good 10 years. How many workers have grown within that period of time? Lost their jobs, Loss of jobs and no one job. can fight for them. No one can fight for them. <laughs> Those who grown up at the time did not even know what trade unionism because trade unionism was not operating because the Gambia Workers Union was the only active union in this country headed by Amy Jalo and <coughs> You see, so that, 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 that creates the biggest setback of trade unionism in this country. That is why. At the time when it was re registered, in 1987, by that time, most of the young that became workers mm -hmm. did not know did what not know. Is. Mm -hmm. So that is a challenge mm -hmm. for us to sensitize, involve in advocacy programs, you know, rallies and etc. These you know have been doing rallies in this country, like politicians and etc. To get the ascension of the public to inject them with the trade union education to know what their rights, roles, and responsibilities are. Like what empl employers' roles and responsibilities are. What are their rights as far as the constitution is concerned, which is the model of the land, etc. etc. In other words, an employer cannot just come and fire a worker no, just no, like just that. Just like that. Even as of now, because you know our young <clears throat> generation of workers are now people who are educated. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, every father see the need that I am not educated, but as a farmer, mm -hmm. I make sure that my children are educated. The other will believe that me, as a palm wine tower, I was not educated, but my children must be educated. I, as a driver, I'm not educated, but my children must be educated. I, a fisherman, I was not educated, mm -hmm. but all my children must be educated. So it goes on that children now, maybe, you know, to get them united and organized is the problem. But whenever they are dismissed unlawfully, they know that I am love unlawfully dismissed because they know that you must do something before you are dismissed. There were seven. There were seven um, unions affiliated to the trade union congress before you assumed the secretary generalship. Yes. yes sir. Today, how many? Um, unions or federations are within the Congress. It's 19. 19. Yes. 19. In other words, you have seen progress. Yes, there is progress, definitely. Every, first, every first of May, yes. 
you address the workers in a May Day rally. In fact, I think the May Day rally has lost the essence of what it is supposed to be. It's more of a sporting day after your speech. But that, is a, that was a time that people should get into workshops and, and discuss about issues that are affecting them in their place of work. But are you, are you surprised that after the might pass on your statement, it becomes a, a sporting jamboree? What would, you have, what would you have loved to see? What would I have loved to see is, you see, Malik, we, we have a program of action in place. And we have a concept nude on media celebration. It's as you rightly said, conferences, workshops, you know, and other, 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 other activities. You see, but the issue here is that one, there is lack of financial. Yeah, but, but wait a minute. That's one. The money that take and spend on that sporting whatever they call. Yes. You buy track suits for your workers, you buy, you cook food, you do blah, blah, blah. They could have subscribed that money to your Congress and you organize that. This is what is supposed to be no, done and not a sporting jamboree. That is what's supposed to be done. Absolutely so. At all, the union have the cooperation of employers. Because it's the employers that pays that money. It's the employers who bought all these, all those things, justice for them. If we request it, they will not even give it to us. We sometimes want to raise funds to make, you know, advocacy programs. To go to to, info, to institute, you know, a workers' tour sensitization program. How close? programs and etc. How close do you work with members of the National Assembly? How close do you do you collaborate with members of the National Assembly? Because you could use your bargaining power. You could you could you could you could lobby National Assembly members and try to make sure that employers who go and buy jerseys and stuff like that and have a field day at the independent stadium take that money and put into something more constructive like organizing your workshop and your congress and your and not only your congress your, your conferences and let the workers understand that trade that workers day is not meant for a sporting fiesta or a sporting jamboree but for the worker to take an introspective and go into, 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 into introspection, look at what have I achieved? What have we achieved during the course of our work this year? Have we got better salaries? Have our working conditions changed? Are we being, do we have our health policies in place? Are we, are, are, is my employer paying social security? A lot of these organizations or these employers do not pay social security on time. Some of them are in the red. Very this true. is what I think you should I have say, lobbied I say in the you, National Assembly. In fact, don't you think so? Of course, I've been doing that as well. I've been doing, I've been doing all those things, Mali. And uh, maybe if you could recall, I've been going even in the press, saying so many things about what you are asking me, because I know the essence of trade unionism and the essence of media celebration. It's not a day for festivity. It's a day to reaffirm and take stock. And take stock for a reward in future. What has been the key words or the key messages of your May Day address? My key message is always is one, my opposing speech is to tell them to know what May Day is all about. That's always my opinion. The capsule you are asking me is where I always thank for them to know that this is the essence of May Day. So I will clearly explain in detail what May Day is all about, how it came about, and what it is all about. That is number one. And from there, 
I will talk about terms and conditions of war. The challenges that workers have. Being no stone is always left on turn. It covers anything on the work environment in this country. Our problem is, you see, maybe it should be tracked. I've approached even the Chamber of Commerce on many, many occasions. Mali, I will say this a television. I provided them with the concept note as to how we should celebrate May Day. And I'm having that concept. My copy is still with me. It was unanimously adopted by the executive, and we believe in it. And somewhere in the Gambia Chamber of Commerce, it's lying in a, in a cupboard. Maybe d yeah. being dusted. Okay, from there time was a time, time when we start to make mm. over it. Mm. I can, uh, uh, you know, to be candid, mm. you know, one like Lady, Lady, Lady B. Beatrice. Beatrice. Prom. Prom. And one of their other boy, I could remember, you know, but in between the boy travel to do, I think, masters outside. You understand? So myself and Lady B. We continue until we were able to, I mean, come out with our action plan, programs, and everything regarding the concept mode. You see, but we cannot proceed. That's why to institute it as it was. What was the problem? Well, everything else, all of it died out. Died out. Uh, yeah, just like you most things. <laughs> Another person as well. I just don't want to be calling me. I understand. We'll spare them. We'll spare them. There I are know. others who know that <laughs> I gave them the hard copy. They requested for the soft copy. I sent it to their mails. <laughs> they told me that they saw it. We'll work on it. We will work on it. We will work on it. And they are the representative of the employers. For us, we always see that employers, they take us as enemy instead of partners. We are partners in production. If you see Europe, is Europe today. is because of this partnership. Between the trade unions and the, and the employers. employers. Very right. That, you, know, you have represented a lot of workers at tribunals. Yes, ma'am. What is mostly the complaint? What complaints do you get from the workers? What situations do the workers have against their employers? One, unlawful termination. Unlawful termination or summary, unlawful and unfair dismissal, unfair redundancy, you know, no employment contracts, no so social security contribution deducted from the employees are not even remitted to social security. Injuries compensation a problem. When industrial accidents occur, it is not even reported to the injuries commissioner. You know, we have to do all the necessary, you know, paperwork with the labor department to make sure the, 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 the accident report forms are filled and submitted to the injuries commissioner. You know, employers here, definitely most of them, although there are serious ones, but they are the unserious ones are the majority. So we'll tell you, go wherever you like, I will buy the law. They will threaten you, I can you imagine. You understand? Mm. Sometimes they will threaten you or try to discourage you not to proceed to court or something like that to fight your right. Because I know no one can buy the law. It's possible, but what I am seeing in the tribunal, I'm saying that it's not possible because I'm with sincere and honest magistrates, definitely, who don't side mm. with any of the parties, but they make sure that the rule of law prevails. Very sincere and honest. I also meet very sincere, honest, and sympathetic lawyers as well. Very good, genuine. Mm. They see that definitely. Well, at the end of the day, just want to make sure that justice is being yeah, done. Justice is being done, definitely. Mm. But these are most of the problems that workers complain of. A worker who works for you, Mauro Mari, <coughs> until he lose one arm, Mauro Mari. Even to take the responsibility of curing that war in accordance with the Injuries Compensation Act is even a problem. 
employers should not take their responsibility when it is their responsibility to kill that person in accordance with law and at the same time it's an international standard workers will cure themselves make sure they do all the necessary paperwork to be compensated and to be compensated will be a problem because if you are not remitting their social security injuries compensation contribution they will not be compensated so you don't want them you don't want to send such a document to the injuries compensation scheme of the social security because you are not remitting and if that happens they will come across your debts or your gaps of <coughs> contribution and you'll be challenged you'll be irresponsible and you have to pay charges you understand so all these things they will avoid they always avoid do they do they negotiate with the congress do they negotiate with you in order for you not to take them to that situation where they have to pay remittances you know backlog remittances to social security for me they cannot negotiate with me good because it's something which you know i can i will i cannot tolerate in mm. fact mm. Mm. because these are constitutional rights of the employee and the employer is mandated by law you deduct it from them you must pay you must system. pay but what they did you deduct it from the, 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 the employees and you reinvest it in your investment because where is that money going you did not remit it to social security where it is going to then you are using it investing it are you surprised that the civil service are not members of the congress that is true because according to the labor act and what would you want to tell them now that they are doing that at their own detriment yes do you know why now we mm. i will not blame them much but for us we have we are struggling on this because it's the labor act that exempt them civil servants that they should not belong to trade unions the domestic workers as well and the military okay when gambia have ratified convention 87 and 98 freedom which, of association which, which states the right to organize mm -hmm. and the right to bargain collectively and according to the convention civil servants are allowed to join trade unions except the army except the army look at senegal the mm. teachers and everybody they are all members of the union here even our teachers union we call them teachers union but it's not a union per se because they are registered under the companies act not the trade union act cap 5601 of the laws of the gambia which is wrong which is wrong you see do you do you ask the secretary general point that out to them no they know it they themselves know it they, they just don't want to do no, it no they are even trying to but what is they, what what, what, what is stopping to. what but is stopping them what is stopping them is that is a provision in the act so what we did in uh, 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 in this new dispensation mm. is that we advocate for the review of, of the, the act the, of the act and to domesticate the ratified ILO ILO convention convention exactly and not from that seven co but we have ratified even nine co ILO conventions nine co ILO conventions and well this time around try for tightly that's how it is done we don't know what anyway is yet to be validated is yet to be validated okay finally as well written to the ministry of trade for them to include in the general orders the portion of the convention mm -hmm. which allows uh, civil servants to become members of the union to be as well domesticated in the geo the general order 
because the general order is what governs terms and conditions of employment of the civil service. If it is not domesticated in the general order, we will see to it that it is going to be another problem. So I've did so. Thinking that in this new dispensation to build a new gang for a rewarding fuel, human rights, good governance, good governance, the rule of law, and rule of law to take place. To take place. We hope that <laughs> with the present authorities that we have will definitely uh, domesticate it into the general orders so that the civil service, the civil servants can belong to trade unions or have their trade unions. Have some of your aspirations, in other words, what you want the Congress to achieve, are they being met? Oh yes, definitely most of them are met because, you know, in this new dispensation, we believe that we need legal reform across the board. Mm -hmm. Because the Labor Act that governs employment relations in this country mm -hmm. lacks many provisions. So that's why we advocate for the review, which is done. We also believe that the employment policy and the employment <coughs> policy action plan that was established has expired since 2008 and have never been reviewed. It is now done as well. We believe that there is no national health and safety policy. And that, and a health and safety policy is in place, although there is, it is not a national one, but there is a health and policy, health and safety policy also in place. That's another one. We believe that the joint industrial councils that regulated minimum terms and conditions of employment in this country was established in 1961, and those conditions are a key. It needs to be reviewed to shift the present needs and aspirations of the working masses and the in our industrial partners, the employers, you know, as of now. Time is against us. Okay. We do not have much time. I have two questions. One is a serious question and the other one is a trivial question. On a serious note, what are your hopes? for a very strong trade union congress in this country. Where lies your hope? Where lies our hope is now we have the trade union bill. And according to the one of the provisions of the trade union bill, workers must belong to trade union. Regardless of civil service or whatever. Yeah, regardless of civil service. Hmm. Because if they domesticated, as we all agreed at the tripartite review of the Labor Act, and the advice I had, and the letters I've written to the ministry to make sure that it is domesticated in the general order for civil service to also have trade unions, definitely uh, it will work. Because we'll have the trained minds to lead the untrained minds. And secondly, I mean we are trying we are we are trying to restructure. The structures we are there, but we are trying to restructure. Our only problem is financial constraint at the moment but we are expecting support externally 
in order to institute our action plans, in order to restructure, get the trained minds, and we'll as well train, because we have I mean, certain assistance for scholarships, funding, and other things as well. It's due to certain circumstances which are bordering in their countries, which the challenge is upon them as well. So they ask us to give them time because we are as well following the situation down there mm -hmm. through the TV here and there sometimes through the networking in the you know the the, the, the IT mm -hmm. you know so we are patient with them as well. So when we restructure, mm -hmm. have the trained minds, there we are sure that when labor every worker know who he is. Or oh, who she is, what they want, who they are, for sure and certain, they will not. Ex they will not allow any exploitation anymore from and their employers, from their employers, or anyone, or where even necessary. They will know that the, 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 the most important aspect is even the political power. They will go for it and get it. Thank you very much, Gaba, on the subject matter. Now, the final question, away from all that we have discussed, this is a trivial question. Who first rode on GA1? Who first enjoyed the luxuries of GA1? GA1, if I could remember, if I could remember, definitely, is Uncle Salam Joe. I remember he was having GA1. No. You are wrong. <laughs> if I could remember. Two times I have invited guests here and they have given me the answer wrong. GA1 is just like SH1. It was a vehicle belonging to the state. It was first ruled by Per Sarnjai. He was the first chief minister. Yeah, Uncle Per, <laughs> Per, yeah, 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 you are right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, yeah, thank you Gawa. Very much. But G I also learned that yes. Sarnjai was driving. GA1, so. GA1 was just like SH1, State yeah, House SH1, 1. State House. V vehicle for the president. For the president. And the first person to have enjoyed that luxury was, was the chief minister. It was the chief minister. Minister Per Sarnjai. Per Sarnjai. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Gawa, thank you very much. Yeah. You've been talking to my guest yeah. tonight. Uh, Ibrahima Gabacham, Secretary General of the Gambia National Trade Union Congress. Yeah. Pleasure to have you on the program and hope to see you again. From me, Malik Jones, thank you for watching. Talk to Malik Jones. Bye-bye.